One of the most important aspects of studying symmetry in molecules is being able to identify symmetry elements and their accompanying uh, operations. And in order to do that, I want to introduce you to a really uh, great website that is uh, linked from our lesson plan. So here's our lesson page. And if we scroll to the bottom of the lesson page and look on the right hand side, you'll see this link down here, Symmetry at Otterbine. So let's go ahead and enter that. And uh, this is the website, and it was created uh, as part of an NSF grant a few years ago and is hosted by Otterbein University. Now, you'll notice that there are lots of different parts of this website. I'm going to introduce you to a couple of them, but uh, I invite you to go here and explore. As you learn more about symmetry, you'll find there's all kinds of useful things that you can get here. Uh, you'll notice there's a tutorial, there is a gallery, uh, a challenge. You can have fun playing the challenge if you wish. I'm going to take you into the tutorial and briefly show you the gallery with this video. So let's go into the tutorial. Now you'll see the tutorial is essentially an introduction. It introduces the symmetry elements and operations that, uh, that we have introduced in this lesson. They include a symmetry plane, which is the element. Its operation is reflection through that plane. Then we have other elements, inversion center, uh, proper axis of rotation, and an improper axis of rotation. The proper axis, of course, is the simple rotation, while the improper axis is a rotation followed by a reflection to a plane perpendicular to that axis. And uh, you can see over here on the far right-hand side the symbols that are associated with these different symmetry elements and operations. All right, so uh, once we know what these are, what do they actually look like in a molecule? Well, one way we can uh, determine this is by going over here uh, to the tutorial page and uh, looking at these things. They're, they're highlighted here as links. Um, the identity link is, I think, uh, per particularly uh, trivial and uninteresting. So we're going to go directly to reflection link and see what uh, sorts of information you might be given there. Now you notice it opens up a page. It tells you a little bit about the operation and it shows you a sample molecule, in this case ammonia, that we can uh, use to look at these different symmetry elements. Now notice that this is an active page. You can rotate this thing around and look at it from different directions, which in fact is very helpful when you're trying to visualize these symmetry elements. I think you can also resize this a little bit. You know, there we can make it a little bit smaller by scrolling our mouse and uh, and so forth. Now, when we look at these, you'll see over here on the right hand side, uh, first of all, there's uh, different molecules you can look at. I'm looking at ammonia right now. We could also look at water and benzene. It lists the various reflections. And so these three reflection planes that uh, can be called up here, corresponding to the threefold, uh, threefold symmetry of this molecule. Um, so if we were to click on one of these, it would show us one of these planes. And you can see that the, each of these planes uh, goes through the nitrogen in the middle and one of the hydrogens, and it bisects the angle between the other two hydrogens. Now, once we have uh, chosen this plane, uh, it gives us a chance to see what that plane looks like in the molecule. Uh, but we can also see what the operation looks like. So for example, if I click on this little right arrow here next to the one that I've checked, I can see those two atoms exchanging one another as part of the operation of that reflection. And I can do that as many times as I wish. All right, I could look at a different plane, and you can see that this different plane goes through a different nitrogen-hydrogen bond. So if I were to click on, uh, I'll rotate this a little bit more, so if I were to click on its action, it exchanges the two hydrogens with respect to that plane. And let me erase this plane so we can see that this is in fact the one that we're looking at. So this is a way that you can uh, examine the presence of elements in these different molecules and also see what, they op what the operations they correspond to look like. All right, if we look at inversion, and in this case I'm going to choose benzene as my example, the inversion center is typically at the center of a molecule, so we'll expect to see it in here even though that does not correspond to an atom of the molecule. Whoops, I already got there. So let's take a look at the inversion center. There it is. And if we were to play inversion, it would show all of the atoms in this molecule reflecting through that center over to the opposite side. So here's what it looks like. That's pretty, uh, pretty interesting, huh? Like a kaleidoscope. All right, if we look at proper rotation, and I'm going to use ethane as my model here. So here's ethane. We're looking at it end on. So if we uh, turn it a little bit so that we can see the carbon-carbon bond, um, we can now uh, look at a couple of different types of rotation. You'll see that there's two listed here, C3 and C2. 
The C3 axis I think is pretty easy to see. It's the one that goes right down the carbon-carbon bond. So if I click on that, you can see there is the C3 axis shown to us. And if we were to click on its uh, rotation, you can see there is the rotation that takes the molecule into an equivalent configuration. Now there's a, another rotation that goes in the opposite direction or it would be two uh, successive operations of this first C3 operation. Okay, so both of those exist as distinct operations associated with this particular symmetry element. And we're going to talk a little bit more about how different elements can support more than one operation. Now what about these C2 rotations? If I were to uh, open this up and look at each of these C2 axes, you'll see that it comes down and it bisects the carbon-carbon bond. And uh, each of these does, and you can see that they do so at these angles. Now I'm going to get rid of a couple of these because I want to highlight one in particular, uh, or just one at a time. Now if I were to animate its operation, you can see there it is. The molecule is rotating through about that axis, and it's matching this hydrogen up with this hydrogen, and this with this one, and this one with this one. All right, so... Sometimes they're not so easy to see, but we have equivalent ones now that can match different sets of hydrogens up with one another. So when I rotate that one, we can see what that example looks like. All right, finally, let's look at improper rotation. And again, we have ethane as our example. So what does improper rotation look like in this molecule? Well, let's uh, first go down. You can see there's two different operations that correspond to this. If I look at the reflection, you'll see that two things are noted here, two elements. I have an axis, which is the rotation axis of, that has rotation about the bond uh, that links the two carbons, and then a plane that bisects that bond. And an improper rotation always involves a rotation followed by a reflection perpendicular to that rotation. All right, so if we were to activate this and see what that uh, operation looks like, it looks like this. There's a rotation and then a reflection to that. All right, let's take a look at that again. All right, so that is a distinct um, symmetry, symmetry operation from the C3 rotation that we saw earlier. All right, so you can play with these and take a look at the, the tutorials for these different symmetry elements. Let's take a look at the symmetry gallery. So go up here to the arrow up here and come down to gallery. And you'll see that the gallery, uh, as it's listed here, shows a bunch of symmetry groups. And we'll talk about what these point groups mean in a little bit. Uh, but I want you to know that there are different ways that we can also access molecules that are part of this gallery. We can look at them by molecular type. And so here's like six different types of molecules. Or we can look at them as simple alphabetic listing of these uh, molecules. All right, in each of these cases, if I s select the molecule, I can then uh, get a, a reading of the symmetry elements that belong to that molecule. So for example, cyclooctatetrene. This is a little bit of an exotic one, but let's take a look at it. So here's cyclooctatetrene. I can't even say it. Um, and you'll see that if we rotate it around, uh, it's got a very unusual shape. Um, something that would take us a while to find the symmetry elements associated with this shape. Let me make it a little bit smaller so it all fits on the on the page. Okay, so now as we rotate it around, we can see it. All right, now you can see the different symmetry elements associated with octatetrine listed over here. There's an S4, an improper rotation axis, a proper rotation axis, two, uh, two other proper rotation axes, and a sigma reflection plane. So if I look at the um, C2 rotation, let's look at this one. Okay, this is the axis that goes right down the middle of the molecule. And I think this one may be the easiest one to see, so if we were to animate it, it would simply be that. The uh, S4 would be the same rotation axis, but now involving a reflection in the plane that sort of runs through the, the equatorial plane that sort of runs through the heart of the molecule. So if we look at one of its operations, we can see that yes, indeed, 
this is an improper rotation axis. Anyway, I won't do more with cyclooctatetrine at this point, but uh, I wanted to introduce this to you so that you can see there's all kinds of molecules that you can explore this way and see how their symmetry elements relate to their structure. And, uh, you know, frankly, use that as an experiential way to learn more about the symmetry of molecules. I hope you enjoy this site. Uh, I find it uh, really a great site for learning about symmetry, and it, I hope will provide you with some useful tools as we go through our study of molecular symmetry.